Hey there, Paul here, also known as Joey Monkey on the forums. Today I'm going to be going over the R2D2 dome lighting kit. If you're not familiar with dome lighting, I'd encourage you to take a look at the Astromech Wiki. Here's a link. If you are familiar with dome lighting, this tutorial should show you how to assemble the version 3 lighting system as designed by John V, also known as Thesis. Because this video is so long, I've broken it up into a few sections, so you can jump straight to the section you want. We're going to start off with assembling the rear logic display, however we're not going to be putting LEDs into that just yet. Then we're going to be testing out the rear logic display using an Arduino Pro Mini and a 5V regulator. After that we're going to be assembling the front logic display and putting the LEDs into that. I'll screw that up along the way and you can see how I panic and try and fix it. Afterwards we'll be putting together a PSI or process state indicator and we'll test the whole thing out, see how it works, maybe hook up uh, an LED for the hollow projectors and that's about it so let's get straight into it and we're going to start putting together the RLD. So here's the rear logic display circuit board. Um, this is the component side where we're going to put the sockets, chips, connectors, uh, resistors, capacitors, that type of thing. This side here is where you're going to have the actual LEDs. So um, let's clip this onto our stand. I've got one of those cheap um, helping hands things here to hold it in place while I work. And I'm just going to throw on all the parts as they're going to go on this thing right now, just so we have a quick overview of what's going on. These are the sockets for the Max 7219 chips. This is the wider socket for the Arduino Pro Mini. Here's a 5 pin double header. And here's a little screw terminal. We're also going to have capacitors and stuff on there, but let's just get on with it here. I'm going to tape on this first socket on this side and then flip it over and we can so we can see the pins on this side. Take out your solder and iron. I've got some regular Radio Shack uh, Rosen Core solder and I've got a Weller um, soldering iron. So I'm pushing, pushing the soldering iron against the pins of the socket, putting a little force on them, and as I do so, I'm touching the solder to the, uh, the pin and the pad. These pins are actually pretty easy to solder, this is probably the easiest part of the whole thing. I'm going to do a few and then I'm going to speed up this video because there's no point in watching me do all this in real time. In between soldering each one, I'm taking the soldering iron and cleaning it on a sponge. Just giving it a rub to get some of the excess solder off it. Uh, it's usually good practice to give it a clean between solders. Sometimes I don't always do it, you won't see me do it all the time here, but it's something that you should get into the habit of doing. So that's the first row soldered up. I'm going to take it off and take a quick look at it. Make sure that I've got solder making contact with everything I wanted to and making sure that the solder isn't bridging any connections. Okay, let's speed this video up a bit. I've got a couple of pins here that need a little bit more solder. 
and we'll take it off again and take another quick look at it. Moving on to the second socket, we're going to do everything exactly the same. Um, That's all three of the regular sockets soldered up. Next up we're going to attach the pin header. This is a five pin double row pin header that we're going to be able to um, chain the, the PCBs together with. Also feed power into this thing if we want. There are actually a couple of different ways of feeding power into this circuit. We can use this pin header or we could use um, one of the screw terminals. I'm probably going to use this pin header because it's just a little bit easier. Anyway, I've taped on the pin header much the same as I taped on the um, IC sockets with a little piece of blue paint mask on one side. And I'm going to do exactly the same thing that I did with the socket pins. These pin header pins a little bit more solid than the um, socket pins so they need a little bit more heating up with the soldering iron but um, it's much the same again So that's the header soldered on. Next thing we're going to do is solder on the socket for the Arduino Pro Mini. This is identical to the other sockets, it's just double the width. Unfortunately my head got in the way of filming me soldering up the second column of uh, pins, but rest assured I did solder them up. Next we're going to move on to the screw terminal, we're going to put it right into the 5 volt spot, tape it on, same again, flip it over and solder it up. Moving on to the resistor and capacitors, I'm going to use a 24k resistor, which isn't the recommended value, it's recommended that you use 28, but 24 should work, make everything a little bit brighter, but I run the risk of burning everything out a little quicker. I'm also going to put on our two capacitors. Both are labeled pretty well there. are all soldered up I'm gonna take a flush cutter to them you can also take um, any kind of little snips to them and just snip off the, the legs just leave um, a tiny little bit of the leg above the solder showing so that's all of the components other than the LEDs soldered onto this um, if I was to put the chips into these sockets right now and hook up an Arduino to it, it'd do its thing. 
so uh, next I'm gonna put some pin headers onto an Arduino Pro Mini. Here's the Pro Mini. Um, I've already put on a pin header for programming this one, but um, if you've got one from the kit I sold, you probably won't have that pin header, pin header on there. And I'm gonna put uh, two more pin headers, or I'm gonna snip this pin header into two and uh, put one down each side of the Pro Mini. This pin header has round pins, it's what they call a machined pin header. And I'm just putting it into the Pro Mini just so um, I can cut off the excess pins that I don't need. Once I have the pin headers down to the right size, I'm going to put them into the uh, socket on the rear logic display. And then I'm going to put the Pro Mini onto the pin headers while I solder them on. Having them in the socket just keeps everything in place and that way I know that once they're soldered, everything will fit right. Again, my giant head got in the way here, so I've skipped past a lot of that. Soldered up. I'm gonna take it off and take a close look at all the solder joints. So here's the rear logic display again. I've put the IC uh, chips into their sockets up top, and if we were to apply power to this now we'd be able to test it out and make sure that it's doing its thing. So to get power into this we need to supply 5 volts to either the screw terminal here, 5 volts in ground, or we have an option of providing 5 volts to the pin header here on the inside. And uh, that's what I'm going to do. And to get that 5 volts I'm going to use this voltage regulator. This will let me take um, any voltage between 5 volts and 12 volts, anything up to 24 actually I think, and uh, it'll spit out a, a 5 volt that we can use to power this, uh, our whole dome lighting system. So uh, I'm going to put 9 volts in one side and 5 volts is going to come out the other side. And um, the voltage regulator has a couple of options as well, as far as hookups, you got screw terminals or uh, pin headers. I'm going to use a screw terminal on the input side and use a pin header on the output side. The screw terminal holes on the regulator are really big and I've tried to fill them completely with solder and I'm doing a horrible job here. Um, I think my soldering iron wasn't quite hot enough. I had it on a medium setting when I should have been on a high setting. So I'm holding the soldering iron onto the pin for a little bit too long and it's it's overheating the entire board. Um, it didn't end up damaging it, but this is really not the way you should be doing it. So I've taped on a four pin header onto the output side of the regulator and I'm going to solder on that pin header right now.
And that's the regulator all ready to do its thing. So back with the rear logic display, we're gonna put in the chips and the Arduino Pro Mini. Apply power to it. Um, actually, before we apply power to it, we're gonna put in a couple of LEDs. And just make sure that uh, they're doing their thing. They should blink on and off randomly. When you're putting the chips into the sockets, you just want to make sure that you've got the key, which is on the right side of the chips. From my point of view here, it's the semicircle on the right side. You just want to make sure that that matches up with the key on the circuit board. So to test this out, I'm going to hook up a 9 volt battery to the voltage regulator and then on the other side of the voltage regulator I'm going to use one of the 2 pin jumper cables from the kit to connect the regulator to the rear logic display and then I'm going to put a uh, LED into the rear logic and see if it blinks jumper wires are all different colors, this particular one happens to be black and white, so I'm going to make sure that the black is ground and the white is 5 volts, and I'm going to make sure that I connect it up the same way on the rear logic display. Your cable might be different colors, but just make sure that ground goes to ground and 5 volts goes to 5 volts. So that's it powered up, you should see a couple of LEDs just lit up on the Arduino Pro Mini and the red one stays lit there. Now I'm gonna put this uh, LED into it, these holes right here. Hold it there and it's blinking randomly. So I know that this is working like it's supposed to. Um, I wasn't terribly careful about putting that LED in there. You might want to make sure that the long lead goes into the top left hole and the shorter lead on the LED goes in the corresponding um, hole that's diagonally down to the right from that hole. So there you have it. Test successful and I'm going to bed. Good night.